Um, so our next person is going to be uh, really of the customer service fan engagement role. I noticed that was mentioned around the lunchtime period, and I, I would say that she has invested more in smile technology than anybody so. else, which is good, because you really have to make sure that you are a welcoming environment if you are going to sell tickets or sell anything in sports, and that's Ruby Newell Legner. Thank you, Ruby. Turn to your neighbor and tell them one thing that you've learned so far today because I'm going to give you a quiz. Didn't see that coming, did you? One thing, you've got 30 seconds, ready, go. One thing that you've learned that you didn't know before you came in today. Ten more seconds. It's the top of the hour, so let's get started. Raise your hand if you're in sales. Raise your hand if you're in service. Okay, one more time. Raise your hand if you're in sales. Good. Raise your hand if you're in service. Oh, still not there. Okay. Raise your hand if you're in sales. Okay, almost everybody on that hand, raise your hand if you're in service. Oh, and raise your hand if you won't raise your hand no matter what I say. I got five of you over there. So, the day is all about sales and making sure that we're servicing them so there's fan engagement and retention. What does retention look like? And what causes it and how do you, how do you multiply it so it happens over and over again? I believe that season ticket holders are created one experience at a time. Those experiences really do exactly, and I just asked how that was gonna happen, and it did again. So there's my turn. There you go, thank you. Season tickets holders are created one experience at a time. When you follow up at the end of the season and you talk to some of the season ticket holders, what exactly do they say about their, their best part of their experience? And what are you doing to multiply that experience? Those of you new to sales, and I know there's a few of you in here, may have those experiences by listening and learning and talking to each one of your season ticket holders or anybody who attends an event for the first time. Now, let's quiz you a little bit on what that might look like. Let's see um, if this is one of the experiences. Who can tell me what's wrong with this picture? I chose it wisely. I didn't want to embarrass anyone, so no one is here from that organization. I did cover up the logo on the chest. That they don't have two name tags on. But what's wrong with this picture? This is a premium entrance. Yes? You bet. The body language is poor, kind of slouched over, really kind of tired, you know, not really excited about their job. What's wrong with the second picture in the right? Yes? eating french fries. Great first impression. I've never been to this venue before. And hey, let me just finish this fry before I answer your question. It's part of that experience. They're making an impression about it. I have the opportunity to go in and secret shop frequently at organizations before I come in and do training. And I love these kind of pictures. I never show the faces, but they know who they are. Because in this case, the person who was eating the fry had just been reprimanded the week before for not, for doing that actually, and they were not supposed to be doing it. So how do you make sure? I heard some things earlier talking about training, making sure the experience is positive. That helps everybody know what's expected, and it also makes it across the board that everybody is in this together. My trick question at the beginning is everyone is in sales. Everyone is in service. Everyone who works in your venue, from parking to security, to the ushers, to the ticket takers, to the ticket sellers, all of those details magically go together to make the package. And I love the quote about Warren Buffett. 20 years to build that reputation and five seconds to ruin it. Wow. It can happen. It can happen just like that. One negative experience. R raise your hand if you've ever talked to an upset ticket purchaser. <laughs> it happens, right? Wouldn't it be great if you could wave that magic wand and you can identify, oh, let's never have that happen again. 
Well, what I find more often than not is that sometimes those happen, you fix it, but the continuity never goes back to the individual or the department who is responsible for that reputation. It's our job is to not rat somebody out or not tell them that they're in trouble, but to be on the same page. This is where we sing Kumbaya. OK, not there yet. Okay. Kumbaya is something that really is everybody in the venue is working side by side to make sure it's going to happen. And that's really some of the things that are out of your control, supposedly, I'm here to differ with you. So I'd like to just take a few minutes and give you that quiz I promised. Let's see if you can answer this question. Uh, let me know if it's true or false. 70% of customers stop doing business with a brand following a bad experience. Hmm? So this button is not the right one. No, this one. one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Seventy percent of the customers stopped doing business with a brand following a poor experience. True or false? False. Oh, raise your hand if you think it's true. No, I'm gonna make you vote. Go ahead. Who thinks it's true? Who thinks it's false? Raise your hand. Oh, it's pretty good. Let's see. This one is true. Hmm. Interesting. 70%. They leave because it was a bad experience. Let me ask you another question. According to Ro Rocket Watcher, I love that, poor customer service accounts for 45% of customer loss. True? Raise your hand if you think it's true. Raise your hand if you think it's false. Oh, that's interesting. I had four people vote on that. That was pretty interesting because it is false because I just told you it was 70%. I just reworded it. Raise your hand if you've ever had a moment where you've had a customer who you went through the whole process, you told them where to park, you told them what gate to go in, what entrance to go in, what it was going to look like when they got there and what their whole experience was going to be, and they went, oh, I don't remember you saying that. Any, oh, I know, it doesn't ever happen, I know, really, it never happens that way. See, sometimes we hear something but we don't really get it because I went pretty fast on that first slide and just because of technology, I repeated it even for you. But isn't it amazing when you hear something and it doesn't sink in? And I would venture to say some of the things and the elements about your ticket sales are repeated occasionally. Would you say that? You say it over and over and over again so it gets you know, really quick and then have you ever seen the deer in the headlights response? And, and you don't pause to say, are there any questions? You just move on, and then when there's a problem about it later on, that's when it's like, oh man, they didn't get what I told them. Happens all the time. Here's another one, this one's not a trick question. In a recent study by Forrester, a, across multiple brands, 54% identified the top obstacle faced by businesses is a lack of a clear customer experience strategy. Hmm, raise your hand if you think this one's true. Okay, got two hands on that one, and it is true. You win the prize, sir, and thank you for uh, interacting here. I do have a book, and you've answered every question. Would you come please get this? Uh, this is the book that I wrote with Stephen Covey and Ken Blanchard on the success blueprint. Thank you very much. My chapter's the best, by the way. My mother-in-law says so. So here we go with the next one. Well, actually, let's talk about this one. The customer experience strategy. Hmm. If I were to ask you what is your customer experience strategy, what would you say? Anybody know their experience? Do they have it memorized? Is it, is it a mantra that's on the wall? Is it tattooed anywhere on your body? That was a joke, but I just didn't really think that it was. We'll note that with the kumbaya statement. I believe that customer service strategy and how that experience happens is really going to tell what kind of fan engagement you have and what kind of retention, definitely. According to Gartner Group, a commitment to customer experience results in up to 15% more customer retention and revenue than sales or marketing initiatives. Hmm, a little controversial. Raise your hand if you think this one is true. Oh, there we go. We got a little bit more. I wish I had more books. I apologize. And how many of you think it's false? Anybody think it's false? Well, that's kind of interesting because this one is false. 
because it's actually 25%. It's bigger than that 15%. So we need to really respect it and take knowledge of it that we have to do something about that customer experience strategy, embrace it, make sure everybody's on the same page. And even though I was joking about the singing of Kumbaya, if I were to ask you, in your organization, is sales and service on the same team? Or is it, I sold it, you service it? Oh, a couple smiles on that one. It's interesting, isn't it? I, I frequently hear that as a, a challenge in the organizations because I'll go in and I'll see that particular individuals have this moment where they're like, yeah, I don't know how we're gonna deliver that one, but I'm pretty happy they sold the ticket. And then the customer's not happy because the service level that they're getting is the, the service person who has to deliver something that wasn't supposed to be delivered. And then the distress starts between the customer and the service rep, and then also the service rep and the ticket seller. Can you see how that happens? That's called anti-kumbaya, just so you know. That's when it's, oh man, they're not meeting, they're not talking, they're not explaining what sales initiatives they have, what things that they're selling, so that the service individuals who are really you know, schmoozing and making sure that that's all kumbaya moments is not there. According to Bain and Company via Harvard Business School, a 5% increase in customer retention increases a company's profit by 15 to 75%. True or false? Let's see the hands. Let's start with false this time. Sorry, Bill. Uh, false, anybody think this one's false? Okay, not getting very many votes on the false. Let's raise your hand if you think it's true. Oh, you guys are, that's pretty interesting because it's false. I gave you a chance. You know why? Because it's much bigger than that. Want to talk about an increase in revenue? 25 to 95%, it's much bigger. So. Customer retention really is important. So how do you get them in, have a great experience, and make sure that they are so excited they're going to retain that level of service? So I thought I'd take you on a little journey. And yes, the interaction will continue here, so I hope that you're embracing that opportunity. I do believe that there's uh, some pieces along that experience journey that will really make a difference. The handoff. When the Steelers called and they said, we would like to create a one team within our stadium, and we wanna make sure that everyone knows what everyone else is doing, so the handoff is really all there and being delivered upon and is really cool. So the handoff, the handoff is when you sell them a ticket and you hand them off to perhaps someone in parking because they're gonna to have to park their car, right? You let them know where the best place to park is and what, parking lot's going to be closest to their entrance according to their ticket, right? And then when they get to the parking lot, they make sure that there's a lot of elements that are shared and stated and directions are giving and it's polite and don't take that cooler in because you can't take it in the building. All those elements set that person up for success who is going to handle it next. Wouldn't it be great if the guy in the parking lot says, by the way, the NFL has this new rule that says you can only take a, a bag this size in, and I know that cooler will not meet those requirements. So instead of getting up there and coming back, why don't you just leave that in the car? Wouldn't that be great for security? Security would appreciate that instead of having to say, oh, by the way, you gotta take that back to your car. See, the handoff then becomes very clear that the person in parking is also educating the guest about the experience. How do you do that in your venue? How do you know what's next? I tell you, I did training for one undisclosed organization. That means it's a bad story. And I remember sitting in the training session and I turned to the gentleman who had hired me to come in and do training and I looked at the group and I said, please don't leave me. <laughs> they were the most hoodlum looking guys I'd ever seen. And that was the first impression in the organization. That was, I'm gonna park your car. <laughs> and it was like a Ferris Bueller's Day Off and it might be there when you get back. Wow, what is that impression all about? What are you feeling about the whole experience? So, I'm gonna take you through the handoff that we taught that day. We had 11 sessions with in seven days, actually boom, boom, boom. We made sure that every department was represented in the training sessions because we wanted everyone to understand from the beginning to the end what the handoff was. And now I'm gonna quiz you a little bit about what you know about the handoff. 
at each phase of this process, it's important to know what impression a person is getting when they go buy a ticket from you. So let's take the first one. At the ticket purchase, tell me one piece of information that is critical for the person who is buying that ticket. Who can tell me one thing? Yes, sir. How they will receive it. And there's so many options today. How they're going to receive the ticket, it's not just like, okay, done. And then they're like, so where do I go? Is it will call? Are you going to mail it to me? Or can I download it? Is it going to be on my phone? Is it going to be paper? How is that all going to work? Very important key part. And that would be important for even parking to know, right? Because they may have a question about that. But you see, if you just train parking folks about parking, you miss that opportunity. So let's go to parking next. Oh, we're going to sign up for the app first. How many of you share when you sell a ticket that there's an app that you can follow along with maybe your team or the venue that gives them additional information? Raise your hand if you do share that. You raise your hand if you have an app. Let's start there. OK, quite a few of you do. What a gift. And I call this the lanyard. In New Orleans, they have this wonderful thing called the lanyard. It's 13 instead of a, a dozen. It's just adding one more thing. So you sell them the ticket, and then you say, by signing up for this app, you have the opportunity to know, you know key insider information, information about maybe even traffic as you're going to the venue, and a lot of key things. Plus, we can push information to them, right? So it's a cool thing. How do you teach them about the app? How do you, do you send them an email? Because they read everything you send them. No, they don't. But that little personal piece of maybe even sending them a link and telling them why it's important to them, that's part of that experience at the very beginning. It, it starts to engage them. And then how many of you have the, the kind of a point system that if they, if they tweet something that has a certain hashtag on it or if they, they like you on Facebook, they get a, a point or something special. Raise your hand. Oh, I'm surprised at that. And I'm thinking you're just tired of raising your hand because I've said it so many times today. But I do believe that's one more opportunity to engage and making sure that that person is really all about the experience. What else is important about the app sign up? Anybody? That tells, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, you bet we're collecting their information. That's pretty nice to have too, isn't it? Usually they have to sign up with an email or maybe a first name, but then we can also push information to them and it's personalized if we get that. If we ask them too many questions, they're not gonna sign up. But little basic information, it is very helpful. You get a prize as well, sir, thank you. Okay, let's go to parking. I gave you a couple of hints. What's important about your parking experience? When you go to a, an event, how many of you experienced parking here? Anybody park? Anybody drive in? And, and, and how much was it to park? 70, 65 to $75 a day to park here. Wouldn't that be great to know in advance? Yeah. You think? Maybe if you purchased a ticket and, and parking is 65 to $75, you're going to go, I'm done. I'm not even going in, right? So that little piece of information is so important. The price, where to park, where the best deals are. Some people may be willing to pay that, but they want to know up front, not later on. What else is important about parking? Secure? Absolutely. If the event is over and there's also, it's after dark when the event is over and they're going to walk out in a parking lot and go, well, there's, there's no lighting, first of all. It doesn't feel very safe. And second of all, it's not really posted the different sections and I don't remember where I parked. But how many of you have ever been to Disney World? And you know how they're parking. It lets you know where you are by the color and the name. And then also they time when you got in so that they can go back and look. OK, if you arrived at 730, that means that you're probably in this section. Lots of ways to monitor that and help that. Let's move on from the ticketing and the parking. <clears throat> how about security? Raise your hand if you've ever had a security moment. Oh, raise your hand if you've ever heard about a security moment. What are some of those moments? Can you share with one with me, please? 
That bag policy. I was working with the Broncos when the NFL came up with the, the wisdom. It was right after 9-11. And what we were experiencing was that everyone who came in the building was blaming the Broncos for the rule. Everyone was blaming the owner for making up a stupid rule. So we scripted very carefully what was supposed to be said so it would be clarified. There were signs put up. This is how big the bag is that you can take in. Um, here are the criteria for the bag. You know, bottle of water, not a bottle of water, all of those kind of things. And then we practiced with every single person throughout the building, even if they weren't even involved in an entrance, to say, for your safety, the NFL has identified the size of the bag and what the contents can be so that everyone can experience a positive experience here at the game. Simple, scripted, for your safety. Who's going to argue with that? Right? That's why. Who did it? The NFL did it. And it wasn't like, yeah, the NFL, man, they make those decisions. I can say that because they're in a league meeting. I'm just kidding. In that moment, you're showing if you are representing or not, if you're supporting or not. So you're saying a lot about who you are in the answer. So if you've scripted it and you've got a good answer, it's going to make a big difference on how it's perceived. And this could be even before they get in the building. Oh, the ticket taker. There's two schools of thought. Get them through that turnstile as quick as you can. And engage them. So how are you? How was your drive in today? Um, are, did you find a good parking spot? No. You, I mean, it's one extreme to the other. And you have to know how long the line is and when it's either kickoff or the puck's dropping or whatever the event is, you have to know how far away you are from that because we want it to be fast, but we still want it to be rude. Take it. But that's what I see a lot. You haven't even gotten to the event and you already have created this reputation. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Guy told me I couldn't bring this in. I got right up to the gate, and he told me I had to drink my beer. Wouldn't it be better if there was someone in the line saying, hey, you might want to finish that. You won't be able to take it into the venue. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Instead of, OK, let me frisk you. Oh, throw the beer away. It's full. What's the impression that is left? The ticket taker has so many elements that are hitting right there. What's one more for the ticket taker? Anybody? Re-entry, absolutely. Letting them know the re-entry rules. The majority of sports, you cannot re-enter. And there may be some situations in medication in the car or whatever in the car that you got to go get. I live in Colorado, so just don't hold that against me. And, and you know, you want to make sure that they know they cannot Oh, that was good. We finally got one. That was a little slow response, but we got it. So in that moment, you're deciding if it's, oh, I can't go back to the car before I go in. Oh, good. I need to go get something first instead of having the no reentry later on. Those words and the pieces there, the information that are being shared is really critical. Game day giveaway. My very favorite here. Game day giveaway. And always there's enough for everyone, right? Especially that person who takes four, right? And so how do you handle it when you're out of those giveaways? What do you say? Well, if you get here on time, how you deliver those messages should be scripted and carefully shared to make sure everyone's on the same page. What is the usher? What is their responsibilities? At many of the venues I've had the opportunity to work, it's one of my favorite roles because they make or break that long-term engagement. Some ushers, actually in one venue, they were going to upgrade tickets, but they didn't want to lose their usher. So they said, we'll upgrade our ticket, but can we take our usher with us? That's a long-term engagement, and that's retention in itself. Next one, Wi-Fi connectivity. It cracks me up. The world is talking about, and Mark Cuban is so funny. So Wi-Fi connectivity, they're calling that the fan experience. If I can go text and tweet, and uh, then it's a good game. Really? I, th I thought there was a little bit more to the fan experience than just being able to do that. It's an important element of it, but 
if I were to ask anyone, maybe the cashier at the merchandise or the person who's selling the Dippin' Dots, so what's the Wi-Fi sign on here? Would they be able to tell you? It's about communication all the way through the steps, making sure that everybody gets it. Concessions, I love it. Raise your hand if in your venue you do have the opportunity for anybody who works there to look to a very succinct list that is, if someone walks up and says, where do I get a Coors Light? Denver moment, sorry. Um, you go to this area, this section, and they can tell them exactly who sells a Coors Light. Raise your hand if you have something like that. I find that most don't, and so, I don't know, then, then the staff member doesn't feel very good about themselves. I don't know, they never tell us anything. Oh great, bonding moment, right? If they know where everything is available, and how about if concession knows where all of the merchandise shops are when someone says, oh, I love that hat. Where, where can I get that hat? And the cashier goes, I don't know, I just sell stuff here. Great, okay, so good team player there. Then let's go to merchandise. What's it like in your merchandise stores? Is the experience so positive that the, everybody is so proud to wear your gear? All of those moments go into the experience, and they're making an impression from the very beginning. I do believe that you have the opportunity, even at egress. Funniest phone call I've ever received. Lady called and she goes, Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, St. Pete Times Forum, which is now Emily Arena. She says, I was just there for a concert, and oh my god, it was amazing, and they told me to drive safe when I left. No one's ever told me to drive safe. Okay, how can I help you? I mean, it was a weird phone call. But she had experienced the friendly greeting to the fond farewell. That means where you wrap it all in a bow and the experience is so profound that it is very positive and everybody is engaged. So with my short 30 minutes up here, my goal was to make sure that you had a, a new thought process. See, my job is to get in your head, move around a little bit, make you think. And I have a longer session on Tuesday. It's about the science of this whole experience. If you're still here, I invite you to get up at 8.30 in the morning and join me. Or just stay up. It's your option. The opportunity to work with all the teams, every single one of them has taught me different things. But here, overall, this is what the overlying message is. Sales and service is everyone. Every single group I've ever worked with, they realize that everybody in the venue makes up that important expression that we're either gonna like it or we're not gonna like it. We're gonna tweet about you or we're gonna complain about you or we will invest more, we will upgrade or I'm never going back there because somebody threw up on me last week. I can't take my kids because the language is so poor and I wanna create an experience. But unfortunately, I've not been able to do that. I believe that there are superstars out there and the key thing for them is to know how each one of those elements that we described earlier is all about. Identifying those particular items are really going to make a huge difference. So I have an offer for you. I want to make sure you take this information back and you get it so that it is very well received and it's a, a kumbaya moment for your organization. Because I believe that people here can make that difference. When Greg Sauter called me from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, he said, I'm in marketing and I'm looking for someone who can help us because we sell a great product, but then it can't be delivered. So by taking the steps and making sure all of those elements go together, you too can create an awesome fan experience, promote fan engagement, get to know the people who are investing in you, make it so positive that they sign up over and over again. If you'd like a copy of the full article that he did, um, please give me your business card. And actually, Jackie, my assistant's over in the corner. If you'd like to give her your business card with handoff written, I'll make sure that you get that so that you can share it with the rest of your organization. You've been a very attentive crowd today. I'm very impressed, and wow, you look so smart. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you, and I'll see you later. Hope you're sticking around for the rest. <laughs>